that's one be one of the biggest knocks against a trucking engine. Dangerous, you know. These are you know uh, weapons uh, when they're out on the road. I mean, come on, they're they're <laughs> extremely necessary. <laughs> yeah, you know, the the world that we would live in would be much different as we're starting to experience now. <laughs> right. If we didn't have this transportation and these you know transportation networks to get the goods that we need from point A to point B. Welcome to The Defense Never Rests with Morgan and Akins, your monthly dose of uncommon sense about all things legal and some that are not. Hi everyone, welcome to this special episode of The Defense Never Rests. We are doing things a little differently today. We are at the TIDA conference in Philadelphia and we have a podcast booth set up in the exhibit hall. Uh, and our plan here today is just to grab people, pull them on the podcast and do little mini interviews and really get to know everyone who's at this conference. So wish me luck and we're gonna just go get some people. Jared, welcome to The Defense Never Rests. Thanks for joining us at the TIDA conference or our podcast booth. You are our third guest. Wow, fantastic. Happy to be here. <laughs> so I've been asking all my guests this today. Um, you know, you're an attorney, you're a practicing attorney. Actually, you're, off, you're in Delaware, right? Uh, the main office is in Delaware. Uh, I work out of the Philadelphia Okay. Office. Um, so a lot of people have different reasons or ways they made their way to law school. Sure. Some of us just planned to go there. Some of us were, you know, political mm -hmm. science majors and had nothing else to do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sure, absolutely. Yeah. So what's your story? Uh, my story is in college, um, it was sort of always in the back of my mind, um, and then I was doing psychology and business, and I really had no concept of what I was going to do with the two of those, mm -hmm. um, and then it started to creep in a little bit more, and then I said, all right, well, let me study for the bar exam, sit and take that and, and see where that goes, uh, and then in the meantime, after I left college in Allentown, I had a connection at a law firm in Philadelphia. And I said, let me just you know, experience what this is like uh, to see what's going on. So uh, I took that job and I basically did anything and everything uh, for mm -hmm. that firm. Uh, and I got to actually interact with a lot of the court's uh, staff and employees. Cause I was a runner. I was in and out of filing offices and everything like that. Yeah. And it was just fast paced and fun. And I enjoyed it. So I was like, all right, well, you know, obviously practicing law is a much different uh, <laughs> animal than, than what that was. But at least drew me that way. And I went that way. And 20 years later or so, it's been fine. Yeah, because I would say that's probably a much different experience than you have on the day by day now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not as it's not as fun. Um, You're not I, running back and forth between the courthouse. Court filing the day things and getting yelled at for not having certs of service and stuff like that, and then coming back and yelling at the staff, being like, "You filed this thing a thousand times. How could you forget the cert of service?" Uh, yeah, no, it's a little different than that. Although, uh, when the pandemic hit, there was some mm -hmm. sort of yeah, you, know, you were showing up to the to the office again. Uh, you were showing up to file things in person, and the lines were out the door, yeah. and that was creating headaches. So I was like, "Oh, this sounds familiar. I've done this. I've been there." Yeah. So I sort of identified with everybody that was going through that uh, in person. So. And did you intend to go into litigation because you had that prior experience? Um, not no, not exactly. Um, I mean, that's kind of what it was. It was all litigation, but. Um, I was also considering sort of like elder planning mm -hmm. or some financial aspects, but the litigation is just so prevalent uh, in Philadelphia right. and the connections were there. So yeah. it just kind of was a natural fit. Yeah. Like when I graduated, I had thought I wanted to go into like real estate transactions, Sure, but there were no jobs. So that's fair. <laughs> yeah. That really, yeah. That really <laughs> Put a, moved my ooh, decision. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so if you were to think back now, mm -hmm. After you've been practicing for many, many, many years, sure. Um, what advice would you give your younger self? Um, probably sort of stick with what your first plan was, uh, which was sort of the financial planning, elder law stuff. Uh, just because it's so important, um, mm -hmm. and it's something you know. I think it was my might have been my property teacher. It was a trust in the state teacher actually, um, and she said, you know, it's something no one ever wants to talk about because it's a morbid talk topic. Mm -hmm. Um, but she said, you have to, uh, and you got to talk about it early and you got to be yeah. prepared to do it. Um, and then really in theory, the same sort of concept applies to businesses with succession planning. It's, you know, the, the concepts are there, yeah. um, and they're important to address and they're important to address early, uh, to make sure you have a plan. Um, and so many people, because they refuse to talk about it and address it, you know, they're behind the eight ball and families lose out on protecting money and building wealth that they could have had that advantage. So yeah. I think I might have stuck with that back in the day just because, you know, I've seen it so much in yeah. my personal life that I was like, oh, geez, you know, that really would have been good to have that background and knowledge. That's true. Because, you I mean, I feel like any of my friends who do that kind of work, they're very busy. Sure. And Absolutely. Yeah, no question about yeah. it. Yeah. And, and I think, too, the, the old generation, they need someone that they can trust and rely on. 
uh, and I feel like I can be that type of person. Um, so I think that would have been a, a good fit for me to do that. There's still back. time. You're not dead yet. Yeah, I know. This is true. <laughs> this is true. Uh, but that's a lot to wrap my brain around. So, and I'm content. I like what I do. So yeah, it's fine. So um, going with the advice, since you know you are now a, we call a seasoned attorney, sure, and you probably have like younger associates working under you. Mm-hmm. Um, what advice would you give them when they have to deal with like pain in the ass outside counsel or <laughs> plaintiff's counsel, how to like keep their cool or like keep sure. a good head on the shoulders? Yeah, I would say uh, sort of the same advice I give to people when I'm prepping them for a deposition. Uh, it's nothing personal. You know, don't take it personal. Uh, this is your job at the moment is to do the best you can in that particular issue. Um, so if you don't lose sight of that, uh, and you don't, you know, focus on I don't like this person or I don't trust what they're telling me, whatever. You know, take nothing personal. Focus on what you need to do uh, and get through it. Yeah. Because uh, you know, you meet a ton of different people uh, in this profession. Uh, some are great, some are not so great. Um, and you know, if you let one get to you uh, and discourage you, then you know that's unfortunate. So try to try to avoid that. Take nothing personal. You know, and, and move on and and deal with people that you you know, prefer to deal with if you can. Yeah. I find it can even be disarming if someone like has totally have it out for you and they're giving you such a hard time. If you just kill them with kindness and yeah. they kind of yeah, don't yeah, know yeah, what to yeah. do with yeah. that. Yeah. And one, another thing too, is I always, you know, be right. You know, at the end of the day, if you're right, <laughs> you, you know, the other person doesn't have a leg to stand on. You can, you always rest comfortable. And I, I, yeah. that's sort of a, a you know, a position I take even just dealing with a client um, you know I want to give them the best advice as possible and as long as you're right on that and obviously there's you know wiggle room here in, in the profession yeah. that we do um, but as long as you've put in the work done the research uh, and are confident in what your advice is or what you your product is that you're producing for yeah. whether it's a client whether it's a you know a senior partner whatever it is uh, you can rest easy uh, but you yeah. got to put the work in yeah well, so we can't be at a transportation conference without talking about something with sure. transportation. Absolutely. Related. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the first thing that comes to mind, and I've talked to a few other people about this, is, okay, so nuclear verdicts, we're seeing a lot of those in yep. transportation cases. There was that giant billion-dollar verdict in Florida recently. So, yeah. you know, what things do you see on the defense side that we can do differently to help combat these nuclear verdicts? Well, uh, actually, I mean, I'll, I'll throw it right back to the, to the presenter that we just uh, listened to. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it was great advice in terms of, you know, try to present something to the jury um, to make them okay with, you know, at least maybe not issuing defense verdict, but not, you know, being, uh, you know, on the opposite side mm-hmm. of where you need them to be from the defendant's standpoint. Get them to agree with points. Get them to understand that it's okay. We're not bad people. Uh, the trucking, yeah, you know, uh, that's one be the, one of the biggest knocks against a trucking injury. Dangerous, you know. These are you know uh, weapons uh, when they're out on the road. I mean, come on, they're they're <laughs> extremely necessary. The, you know, the the world that we would live in would be much different as we're starting to experience now. <laughs> right. Um, if we didn't have this transportation and these you know transportation networks to get the goods that we need from point A to point B. Um, So if we're able to present those ideas and remind jurors of those ideas, uh, you know, at the outset of a trial uh, and certainly in in closing, I think, you know, that would help us uh, immensely. I mean, that's something that's been brought up a bunch today, too, is that there's such a driver shortage out there and reminding jurors that, like, look, you might not get, you know, your paper towels and your toothpaste, you know, the next day after you order them if you know yeah. these truckers aren't on the road exactly. so yeah, <laughs> yeah there, there's, a, little there's, slack. A, there's an everything shortage uh the thing with the truckers though is they're bringing a large <laughs> chunk of that everything um so that becomes very prominent when when something like this you know global pandemic yeah uh, pr- puts that in the forefront for us so you know you're a very put together guy <laughs> try yeah so yeah. how do you keep yourself organized at work are you that's just a, always organized? That's a good question. <laughs> um, now, I mean, so uh, previously, uh, you know, I sort of had a small team around me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, you, you always knew who to go to exactly. Say, hey, where are we at with this? Where are we at with that? Um, but it was more so, you know, just a small team of doing that work. So it was, I thought, it harder to stay organized than it is now. I have a lot more volume of things, but I have a larger team. Uh, yeah. and just a lot of very capable people that are very good at what they do. Um, so I think the team environment has really been helpful for me. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, creating a good team around you, people that you could trust, 
uh, you know, creating protocols. Mm -hmm. um, so every day, you know, when something comes in, you know, a new file, it's triaged the same exact way. You know, you don't miss anything. Um, you know, I think those types of, you know, yeah. implementations of processes help. No question yeah. about it. And doing this for 20 years, you know, that gets ingrained uh, yeah. as well. So I think when the first couple of years you're trying to figure it out, you know, what what works best for you, and everybody has their own sort of, you know, dynamic there. If people have tickler systems, people have this, whatever it is, um, you know, uh, it's just you figure out what works for you and you yeah. stay on top of it and you repetition is another thing that helps yeah. I think so I mean I think the team aspect is such a good point though too because we're only as good as everyone else who are around no us like we can't it. do it this job alone yep. like, right. <laughs> there's really a can. whole group of people who help yep. us you know get get out the product out the door defend the cases yep. how we need to defend them so you know I think the team aspect is a really good point yeah and I think the other thing for me just personally is I don't like to sleep that much. Mm. So, so I don't mind <laughs> uh, staying up to whatever hours I need to do to make sure I've looked at everything, reviewed everything. That helps. Um, so yeah. if you're someone that likes to sleep, litigation might not be the best uh, yeah. career. Or if someone likes to sleep soundly. Like I That's often wake fine. up yeah. in the middle of the night like yeah, having the, something the, I thought yeah. of. I, I can get good four hours in before <laughs> you know, I disturbed and all of a sudden there's a thought and you're like, oh, damn it. Time to get up because I'm not going back to sleep now. So, <laughs> so one last last question again. We sure. can't can't be at a trucking conference without talking more about trucking. Absolutely. But you know, if you were to think about the the top five, and you don't have to do all five. I've, okay. heard, I've asked this question. Everyone kind of <laughs> teeters off. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> about the uh, two, issues. three. How many do you get up to? Yeah, they're like, yeah. oh, I don't, I don't know. Um, so some the of the bigger five. issues that you're seeing in the trucking industry in the in the coming years. Like, what do, what would you think those would be? <sighs> Jeez. Um, I think nuclear verdicts is definitely one of them. We're seeing yeah. it already. Yeah, it's funny because I'm, I'm, you know, I think it from you know two sides: the legal side and just the business side of it uh, yeah. as well. Um, certainly, what's going on at the ports and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And I know I forget how many years ago it was now that TWIC cards TWIC mm -hmm. became an issue. Um, you know, uh, just the changes that have come along and, and see how they affect things now. Because um, obviously, with the driver shortage, um, mm -hmm. it's tough to get the right people qualified and then the ports obviously there's you know that's not just someone going from you know philadelphia to allentown driving back and forth there's right. a little bit more regulation that's involved and they're getting in and out of ports um so just the two aspects i would say you know and how they go together um you know <laughs> there's there's real world uh and then there's legal world yes uh, right. real world <laughs> is 100 percent different and, mm -hmm. and that's i think unfortunately uh plaintiff's attorneys certainly and the way they present cases they don't look at it from a real world standpoint. They don't look at right. it from a, you know, this is the business that drives our economy, it drives our country. Um, so they don't look at it like that. Um, and that's unfair, uh, no question about it. And when you bring a people, 12 people in a box, mm -hmm. lots of times they don't look at it e as well either. So I think again, you're reminding them of the importance right. uh, of that and presenting that in a way that a jury can be actually sympathetic to the trucking company uh, is a key there. Um, the driver shortage, no question about that, and yeah. the impacts are going to be there. Um, well, I like hmm. the real world point because I mean that's really our job is, yeah. you know, to kind of remind the the jury that it, you know, yeah. this is like, yes, like there are there, are, this is what you're hearing, but let's think about this realistically and logically sure. and how things actually work. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think you know, to you know. Just technology is certainly a, a, another big issue. Um, you know, lots of companies have the ability to track their trucks, track their drivers. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, they have all the necessary uh, filings and documents that you need online, whereas some maybe some other smaller companies don't. Uh, and that's where you have more of a transient driver issue coming in yeah. and out of them. Um, so you could, and that's sometimes where you get some of the nuclear verdicts as well. Right. Um, just because you don't have that same oversight um, and you know the mom and pop shops it, right. you know, it, it's difficult um, for them to survive in this mm -hmm. day and age I think and, and no question about it you need them right um, so yeah just trying, trying to think if there's what else would pop into my mind in terms of the uh, keys what do you think <laughs> uh, let, me, let me see if I let me see if you had any that no, I no, might no, agree I do with the you question. I do That's the fine. asking too. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just here to there, ask there's questions. no turning the tables. Got it. That's fine. <laughs> Someone already tried that today. Oh, uh, really? Oh, damn. It. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not original then. I hate that. But I think the point you have about the smaller drivers is like is such a good one because, mm. you know, I, a lot of them they can't afford all like 
And sure. putting in all this technology is just not in their budget, but we need them just as much as we need yeah. the, the larger outfits. Right. So, you know, I think a lot of it, though, is being consistent. Like, you know, they might not have the fancy electronics, mm-hmm. but, you know, if you have a system, like if you have a check balance system and you have your you, on paper, you just have to do it right. consistently. I mean, this goes across for all industries. Yeah. Like even, you know, any of my premises cases, I was like, okay, well, it's good that you have a checklist, but you need to do the checklist right. all the time because as soon as you don't do the checklist, then someone's going to find a hole. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, and I think, yeah, I, I don't know, certainly the driver shortage is an issue, yeah. but I would suspect too, just even in other positions within companies, they've probably lost people and people aren't coming back. Yeah. Um, so there's probably some change over there that would sure. certainly have some effect, you know, on someone that, you know, they, this is the person that does the compliance checks. Well, you know, they're not here anymore. So now we have someone new and maybe yeah. they're not as good. So I think those types of issues throughout companies as well will probably be an, an issue. Yeah. Uh, and certainly here's the other thing too is, you know, what happens now, lots of times we don't see that in litigation until two or three right. years down the road. Uh, yeah. And then you start to see, especially from a claim standpoint, you know, sure. they can see things. Uh Oh, this is over here. We know it's coming back around in a couple of years. Yeah. Um, so that's probably going to happen here, and, I would think. And there's also like a Monday morning quarterback aspect to that, too. Like, well, why were we do? Why were you doing it that way? <laughs> sure. the time you yeah, that's know. fair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the other thing is too, plaintiff's attorneys adapt. They mm-hmm. learn. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, the more they learn uh, about trucking industry and stuff like that, you know, they adapt it and they come up with different solutions, different strategies, different causes of action. Um, and like you just kind of mentioned that, you know, that falls right into their hands to a certain yeah. extent. Um, so things like, you know, driver short just gives them one more thing to, right. to harp on and, and try and, you know, demonize uh, the trucking right. industry. Right. Well, thank you so much for no taking the time away from the wonderful material at this conference and sitting Absolutely. down and chatting with us. Absolutely. I enjoyed it. And spread the word. Not a problem. I will. I'll, I'll, we'll, you'll be a line around the door in about five minutes. So thanks. This is fun. Cheers.